Hello, welcome back to Math 11311141 Calculus. Here we have a question about derivatives of inverse trig functions. Suppose we have this sum of two inverse tans, inverse tan of x and inverse tan of 1 on x, show that its derivative is 0 for all x other than x equals 0. Hmm. Well, we can take the derivative of the function f, which is f prime of x is equal to d dx of tan inverse of x plus inverse of 1 on x, which is equal to d dx which is equal to, well, this one is fairly straightforward. That's just 1 on 1 plus x squared. This one, hmm, this one's a bit more tricky. I'd like to take the derivative of this with respect to 1 on x, because then it's just 1 on 1 plus 1 on x squared. But I can't do that straight up, because I've got this x here, and this symbol here doesn't match this symbol in here. So I can use a chain rule to make it work. Plus d, d, Let's see. What I'd really like to do is take this with respect to a u. So I'll put my dx du here, and then d du down here, tan inverse of u, where u is 1 on x. And this is the same as what I've got up here. If you can imagine that the du there would cancel with that du there, then I've got exactly what I had on the previous line. And this is equal to 1 on 1 plus x squared plus negative 1 on x squared times by 1 on plus 1 on x squared, which is equal to 1 on 1 plus x squared, and this becomes minus 1 on 1 plus x squared, which is 0. And so the derivative is 0, except at x equals 0 when you have problems with the definition of this function. So we saw in our previous slide that the function f is constant everywhere except at x equals 0. But it's not clear that it's the same constant on either side of 0 there's this discontinuity at x equals 0. So on, say, the positive x-axis, we can say the function has the same value. And on the negative x-axis, it has perhaps a different value. Let's have a look at what x might be on the positive x-axis. And we can do that by just evaluating the function at one point. f of, say, 1 is equal to 10 inverse inverse of 1 plus tan inverse of 1 over 1, which is equal to pi on 4 plus pi on 4, which is pi on 2. And because the derivative is constant, sorry, because the derivative is 0, f of x is pi on 2 for all x greater than 0. And we can't make this claim if we included x equals 0 because we don't have the fact that f of x is equal to 0 there. f of negative 1 now, turning to the negative x-axis, this is equal to tan inverse of negative 1 plus, which is negative pi on 4 minus pi on 4, which is negative pi on 2. Aha! A different constant. Since we make the same argument, f prime of x is equal to 0 on the negative x-axis, then all the f values are the same.
So the function f is constant, but it's two different constants on either side of x equals zero. Okay, so now we're going to account for this phenomenon geometrically. And we'll ignore the fact, well, we'll ignore the negative x-axis side because it doesn't make sense geometrically to have a negative x length. Then f of x being equal to tan inverse of x plus tan inverse of 1 on x. Well, tan inverse of x, that's equal to tan of opposite over adjacent. So that's opposite over adjacent there. So tan x, tan inverse x is equal to alpha. And tan inverse x, or sorry, tan inverse of 1 on x is equal to beta, which by angle sum of a triangle must be equal to pi on 2, since we have pi on 2 over here, these two angles must also sum to pi on 2.